black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. Reality Temple. My black people. It's all about the unity. There's nothing they can do with us, so ain't nobody moving me. Like Dr. King, we make it plain and simple. Bringing down a dead fire at Reality Temple. at Kroger yesterday when a black man got mad at me because I told him I don't believe in God. He tried to give me a flyer and started talking to me about his church. I told him, no, I don't believe in God. And then as I was walking away, he said, God bless you. I said, how can God bless me if he don't exist? That man looked at me like I was crazy. But anyway, you know, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I, I know a lot of people in Atlanta are Christian, you know. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by Christians, you know, so, you know, I just have to deal with them. I have to tolerate them, you know, because, you know, it is what it is. You know, I'm, I'm surrounded by Christians, brain-dead slaves to religion, and that's what they are. They're, they're slaves to religion. They are a bunch of goddamn slaves. I, I mean, and people that are religious make the best slaves. They really do. They make the best slaves. In fact, employers love Christians because they know that they can control Christians easily. They can control Christians very easily. So that's why supervisors, managers, they love Christians. A lot of my former bosses were Christians themselves. So with me being an atheist now, they definitely would have a huge problem with that. Um, that's why I was discriminated against by my former employers, because I was an atheist. That's why I lost my job, because I expressed views that they did not like. And therefore, I lost my job as a result of me expressing views that differed from their views. Because, you know, Christians want everybody to think alike. They want everybody to think like they think. They want everybody to believe what they believe. And if you don't believe what Christians believe, they have a problem with you anyway. Um, you know, because that way they can't control you. See, if you don't believe the way they expect you to believe or want you to believe, they know that they cannot control you. And therefore, they have a problem with you because they cannot control you the way that they want to control you and manipulate you. So therefore, you know, you will have problems with most Christians on the job, you know, especially if you profess to be a non-believer, you're going to run into a lot of problems with religious people, okay, and, and that's just the way it is. But you know, there are laws that prohibit discrimination and harassment based on your religious beliefs or non-beliefs. There are laws that prohibit retaliation against you because of your religion. You know, so therefore you don't have to tolerate any bullcrap from religious people on the job. You can fight their discrimination, their harassment, their retaliation. You can fight against it. But you need to document everything. Document everything. So, anyway, I just wanted to talk to you guys about that particular incident involving a Christian yesterday so that's pretty much it other than that I'm okay I'm not I'm not homeless as you can see I'm still in my car here you know I know a lot of you thought that I was going to be homeless by now and losing my car and and whatever but I'm okay despite the fact that a lot of you did not want to donate for my book project you know, but it's all good. A lot of you did not want to donate your money for my book project. And I'm still irritated by that. So, you know, I don't spend a lot of time with folks on Facebook as much as I used to. Uh, I don't spend a lot of time with folks on YouTube and Twitter. 
as much as I once have. Because I realize that everybody claiming to be your friend is not your friend. Everybody skinning and grinning in your face ain't your friend. In fact, you got more enemies than you got friends a lot of times. And I just realized that I probably have more enemies because of who I am as a person because I don't believe the way that people want me to believe and they can't control me. I have more enemies now, even in my own family. Even in my family, I have a lot of enemies because they can't control me and they can't dominate me like they once have. So therefore, you know, it's all good. It's all good. Allow us and you'll be happy and smiling to be something that you're not. God, if, if God is a just God, if God is a compassionate God, merciful God, God wants you to return back to what you was, what you were. And if this God can't do that, then God gives you a brand new identity that you can be proud of, that nobody else can claim. That's the least that this God can do. So Christians can't say, well, that's our religion. We gave that to you, Negro. So the Arabs can't come to us talk about Islam. That's fake Islam. We the You can have your Islam. You can have your Christianity. Because see, if God was merciful, just like God came to them and gave them their revelation, then how come God cannot come to us? Well, some of you are taught that God came to us in the person of Master Farah Muhammad, that God did come. But why would God give us a hand-me-down religion? Islam is not a hand-me-down religion to the Arabs. Christianity and Jesus is not a hand-me-down religion to them. They can make these claims that God came to them. Why would God see you and us, we, so pitiful that we get their hand-me-downs? See, some of us who were raised in large households, we know about hand-me-down clothes. I'm in the middle, so I get big Johnny's and bigger Johnny's clothes. You hand those things down to me. This is done because we're poor. So we have to take advantage of our resources. God is not in that position. God, since he's the maker, the owner, the cream of the planet Earth, then God should be able to give you your own, not somebody else's used product. And then, since your product is new, then just like the new car, we want the newest car, the latest clothes, whatever, people follow the latest trends, then those religions become obsolete because God gave you something that's new. Oh, wow, man. It's, woo! Give you your own book. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I never met him, so I'm only quoting what I heard. But Elijah Muhammad said, that we have come to the end of the Holy Bible and we have come to the end of the Holy Quran. So why are you happy about holding on and giving all your loyalty to the Holy Bible and the Quran when they have reached their peak? It is they have come to the end. And some of you have decided to go back in time, fabricating some new thoughts and ideas of the past. And we look so silly trying to be ancient Egyptians or trying to be Israelites. Who we never met. We never met these Egyptians. We never met 
these Israelites. And we look, we look foolish. We look dumb doing those things. The Hebrew Israelites, they also embrace the Bible. Why God can't give you your own? Why do we have to embrace those things of the oppressor? Those who put us in this position that we are in. Either God don't really care nothing about us. Or we have not reached to the point where we can grasp on to the new revelation coming from the heavens. You're not grabbing or you cannot comprehend the new teaching, the new revelation coming from the heavens because you are loyal to that which was given to you by your oppressors or you decide to make, fabricate some new, some stuff that you think that come from the past. But if God is a good God and if God exists, then God wants you to return back to what you was. Or God has caused us to go through all of this trial, all this tribulation to make you new. And God needs a new people. It says in your religious teachings, Behold, I make all things new. God creates a new heaven and a new earth. And the former things shall pass away. What is the former things? The former things is the Bible. You come to the end of it. The former things is the Quran. Egypt, all those things are the former things. I shall make things new. And if I'm going to make, if I'm God, and I'm going to make things new, then I need a new people that, that are not part of the old. And I'm telling us that it is you, but you cannot become the new while you wear the old. Think like the old. Think like your oppressor. Walk like your oppressor. You are a black version of your conqueror. Holding on to those things that, that are going, that should be passing away. So a new heaven and a new earth requires a new people, a new wisdom that is beyond Bible, that is beyond Quran. And I'm telling you, it's in you. The scriptures also say the kingdom of heaven is in you. And it's here, right here. If you get rid, if you allow the former things to pass away. That's what I represent. The passing away of former things and to bring in the new, to open up the kingdom of heaven, open up your mentality, open up your mind so you can begin to let that flow. And nothing will change until you change. But as long as you continue to have the old mentality, as long as you belong to that which should be passing away, your condition will not change. And it should not change. You might as well stay where you're at. Because a real wise God is not going to allow you to be wallowing around in the mud and then going to his heaven, checking up his brand new floor. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Woo, thank you for listening, brothers and sisters. Let's talk about it. Time to change and become somebody new. This is your brother, Tali Gibbara. This was and is the Reality's Temple on Earth. Like that the king, we make it plain and simple. Bringing knowledge and fire at reality simple.